<laughs> I know what you're thinking. I've been gone for a while. But I'm back. Like I've said on my other video, I'm back. And even if I get hacked again, I'll be back again. Okay? Um, and as you can see from the title, today I'm going to show you how I made my song Deja Vu. Let's just go right into it. I'm honestly super excited to be back, so let's just jump right into it. Ooh, nice transition. Um, we, As you can see, I've opened up the project. The project looks like this. Um, a lot of drums, a lot of automations. It's a pretty big project. I keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, and you keep on finding things. Um, it's pretty organized, if you ask me. <laughs> and I've used about 90 channels. Not many. Now, how did I start this song? Because a lot of you ask me, how do you start your music? Do you use chords? Do you use drums? Well, in this case, I started off with chords. Actually, I need to go back a little bit. Or way back. The idea for this song was to create a nostalgic feeling. It doesn't matter what genre yet, but I wanted to create something nostalgic. So, how do you, how do you create something new that gives you a nostalgic feeling? Well, by using a progression that has been used before. That way, I can basically trigger an emotion in you from a past song, but not necessarily using the song. Um, chord progressions aren't copyrighted. So if you like a chord, a chord progression from this song or whatever other song, you can use it. There's only a certain amount of chord progressions available, at least for EDM, you know, unless you're doing like some weird ass EDM jazz thing, you know, but as it is, you can use any chord progression. So I did. The chord progression was this one. Sounds like this. This is a very famous chord progression. It's basically a, I'm gonna open it up. It's basically a D, I mean a G, and then D sharp, and then A sharp, and then you go to D. So it creates a very nostalgic feeling. In this case, the chords are a little bit more complex. I'm not using the simple triads because I wanted to give, um, you know, the breakdown a little bit more body. So I added a bunch of other notes. In this case, like this chord, like listen to it. And then you listen to this one. They're not the basic chord, as I've said. I can make it basic just by doing this, for example. And now it's only three and it sounds like this. But if you add more stuff, it, it, it gets fuller, you know? If you actually see it on a on a EQ or something like that, you'll see that it has way more frequencies. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, I'm using Spire for this sound. I'm actually using two. One of them looks like this and it sounds like this. It's a Euro synth. I wanted to make a Euro dance song with a futuristic twist. And that's what I ended up doing. So I used both sounds from the past and sounds from the future, right? Then I've got this other sound to layer it up, that sounds like this. They're pretty similar, but if you put them together, they help each other out. So, so far so good. I had the feeling that I wanted, right? But I wanted to create a, a more uplifting feeling to it, not just a nostalgic feeling, but a uplifting feeling. So how do you mix those together? I think what I did was make the first part of the breakdown an octave lower than the second part of the other of the breakdown. So let's listen to this. It's usually one octave lower. You'll see. Pretty basic. And then it goes up. So I mean, obviously, when you listen to it alone, it's kind of boring. But when you add this up in the whole idea of the song, it just makes it so good. So what else do I have? I actually added a uh, bass line, which, again, I wanted to sound nostalgic. So I opened up a very, very famous sound from the 90s. 
So the Korg M1. And this one, obviously, you heard it before a million times, sounds like this. Right now it has a lot of effects, but I also had another organ bass, which I removed, I removed most of the highs on this. Um, and then this other plugin, which is again, another Korg M1. So it's basically three versions of the Korg M1 uh, organ. All together, together with the chords, sound like this. And what, what this bass sign is doing is just helping out the chords. It's, it's helping out the chords have a little bit more direction. Because if you hear them as they are, they're basically plain notes. Even if you look at them, they're just like no, same notes over and over again almost. There's a small change between them, but with the bass sign, you basically guide the listener so there's more sense to it. The first part of the breakdown though, it's it's supposed to be like preparing you for something, you know, preparing you for what I've said before, which is the uplifting part. And again, in order to make something uplifting, you go up. As you can see on the second part of the breakdown, I've made the bass line faster, way faster. So it, from sounding like this, with a lot of delay, it ended up sounding like this. Which to me was like pff, really good. Um, also notice that it has sidechain because I, after doing this, I added a kick. And then I was like, uh, it's not Euro, Euro dance enough. So let's add a ch ch hi-hat. Um, besides that, I added a lot, a lot more drums. I added some hi hats, another bass drum, but only to give some more highs and more dirtiness to it. And then I added another hi hat. This one's like extremely nineties, so I just added it, but it's also filtered. Yeah, besides the bass line and the chords, in the chords, I've added a lead, which kind of sounds like a super soft. It sounds like this. And it basically repeats over and over again till the second part of the breakdown where now it's making a melody. This is actually an arpeggiated synth. If you look at it, I've, I have, I've added an arp to a lead. Obviously I'm just using the first part of it. Um, and it's basically just a melody that I've ended up... Normally, whenever I use an arpeggiator, I use it either on a chord progression or just a single note. But in this case, I made a melody, I made a melody using a, an arp, which is kind of weird. I've never done that before, but it worked. So if you actually combine the bass line and the lead, it sounds like this. <laughs> And that's basically how Deja Vu was made. I mean, from here, anything else is just like made from there. Very important, I did not have the vocals of the song. I actually made the instrumental before and then I got the vocals. Um, but I had no idea that the vocals were gonna be this good. But I knew that I wanted something that was like next level. So. Actually, before we go into the vocals, what happened to the drop? How did you make the drop, Jay? Well, here's how. As you've, as I've told you before, I created a chord progression on the break, and I wanted to keep that chord progression for the whole song. So what I did was recreate the progression of the chords on the bass. This is how the bass sounds. <laughs> So it's basically doing the G, D sharp, A sharp, D, and so on. So for the bass line, I'm only using two layers. 
surprisingly. I normally use like 20, but in this case, I only use two, uh, which is a sub and a base. Easy. The sub is actually a sub that I made for my sound bank, Silent One sound bank. It's called Sub Escargot as a snail, but Escar, you know? Um, it's honestly really good. I use it for everything. If you want to go get it, it's on my site store at jscar.com. You can find all of my sample packs and stuff there. It's really, really good, honestly. Um, not just for the sub, but for everything else. And for the bass, I basically made, because you guys know, the most famous or like the, the most trending genre at the moment is Brazilian or like Slap House. So I wanted to create a bass line that sounded like Slap House, but it wasn't Slap House. Um, so I made a pretty long, Slap house bass, and it sounds like this. Pretty good. Again, if you listen to it, to this together, it sounds like this. I mean, what I did to this wasn't pretty complicated. Um, all I did was basically add the sub, made it mono, uh, add a camel crusher. Then for the bass line, I basically added uh, a little bit of bit crusher to add some high frequencies. Then I added an Oxford inflator to make it like loud and good. This is basically like a clean OTT, which I love. And then I've added a Magic Stereo Pro, or not Pro, but just Magic Stereo, which makes it wider. Um, in this case, I'm just using a bass preset, and that's pretty much it. Um, I got rid of the lows, and as always, the Apex secret, which is basically an EQ with some resonance on it. And that's how you create the bass line. If you actually listen to the bass, this is how it sounds. If I remove all of the effects, it sounds like this. <laughs> so after you add effects, it sounds like this. And that, that, that's a huge change, if you ask me. Um, I also added a kickstart for the sidechain. Um, and also an endless smile, just so I can transition the bass line a little bit better. Okay, so now for the leads, which is almost the last thing in the song. Um, I've created a sound that sounds like this. The main lead is actually a pretty basic sound. It's a solid with air. That's basically what it is, or like with noise. That's what I meant. And if you go into it, it's actually super distorted. This is how it sounds without any effects. And this is how it sounds with effects. It definitely sounds distorted. It actually has a distortion inside of um, silent thing. If actually, if I remove it, this is how it sounds. It sounds horrible, but if you add a lot of clip distortion, like when I say a lot, I mean full clip distortion. It sounds like this. So from this to this, distortion is everything, okay? Um, but I also added more distortion with Saturn 2. All I did was use a warm tape and put the band drive to about 20%, as you can see there. I've also added a chorus, but only at like 20% again, actually 32. Then I've added a dimension expander. I didn't want to use magic stereo on this one because I wanted a little bit more control, but this is basically what I use, just a free plugin for Maxfair. <laughs> and then I used a inflator again to make it sound loud and clear and really good. And just EQ. Get rid of the lows, add a little bit, some high mids, and that's pretty much for the same for the main sound. I thought it wasn't enough, so I ended up adding one, two, three, four, five more sounds. <laughs> one of them sounds like this, then another one, then another one. Actually, all the layers without the main sound sound like this. So if you actually pay attention to this, this is basically a bright chorus or unison clone of the main sound <laughs> it's basically the same sound but wider and also with a lot more voices that's basically what i did i made it in a very complicated way but i've added a bunch of presets you put them together and it sounds like this very good one of the layers was actually this lead then another one was this one and these are actually part of my sound bank uh, lead day or night and D and lead day or night three. They're both part of my silent one sound bank. If you want to go check it out, link in bio. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. 
honestly, so yeah, after making the lead and the bass, you pretty much got everything for the song, um, except you need to pay attention to the drums. Very important. This is how the kick sounds like. Super cool kick, then a clap, then another clap. Then I've got a uh, drop clap in the background just to help out the, the punchiness of the kick and also like the, the energy of the whole song. They're super, super loud. Um, I've also added another clap and I've also added another clap. Then I've added, you know, effects, ex exhausts. And I've also added a hoover in the background. It sounds like this. Super low in volume, but it helps out the whole the whole idea. But after that, for the build up, it's basically everything from the breakdown, but just looped and, and with a pitch that goes up and also with reverb. And it's also the drop sounds with a filter. This is basically how it sounds. And then you add drums. And then you add a sub drop. And then you reverse the, su the sub drop so it goes like whoop. And then a lot of sweepers, a lot of sweep, da sweep down, sweep down, down lifter, reverb noise, uplifter, riser, Tom and Jane riser, riser long, you know, you have a lot of them. But all of, the, all of those sounds are there for a reason, okay? So, I mean, for all of the production, that's basically what it is. Second break is pretty much the same thing with a lot, of, with a lot more drums on it. And then the second drop is basically, again, same thing with more, with more sounds. So, last but not least, how did I find these vocals? Well, I actually paid for them using a website. I'm not going to name it because they're not paying me. But I found these vocals on a website. Um, they were specifically made for the song. That's one important thing. Um, two, they're exclusive for my use. And um, yeah, this girl sent me some great vocals. We we actually worked on it for like two weeks or something like that. Uh, sending forward ideas, talking about what we wanted the song to talk about. And at this time, I remember I was getting a lot of deja vus um, and I've always gotten them to be honest since like I can remember so I was like you know I want to talk about something deep not not like let's go out and drink you know let's actually talk about something deep if if we're able to and she was like yeah sure what do you want me to talk about so we we started writing and stuff like that and she ended up with this thing and also with the melody and it's like it was unbelievably good I obviously send her a lot of reference songs that I wanted um, for this song, but the the final result was just unbelievable. To be honest, this is my favorite song ever, even if it's mine, but it's my favorite song ever. I love it. Um, it's basically like a child, you know? You create the child, and then you see it running into the world and achieving things, and that's basically how I see this one. To me, this song deserves millions and millions of plays. Maybe it doesn't for you, but to me... This was like, I'm, I'm extremely proud of this. And basically, yeah, she sent me this vocals. This is the main vocal. Sounds like this. It just struck my head. My world turned upside down and I feel lost inside. I did a lot of work on the vocals. Um, the main vocal is going out. I separated the vocal on the verse and on the chorus. I sent them to a channel. And on the channel, I'm using a studio rack where I have a Avi saturator, Avi Road saturator. You can see it here. Then I have an art box, which is here. You can see it. Then I have a Q10, which is basically an EQ. Um, there's a secret sauce to this vocal, and that is the Avi Road saturator. There is nothing better than this saturator on vocals. Trust me. Listen, to, listen to the vocal without this saturator. It sounds like this. It just struck my head, my world turned upside down, and... Now, listen to it. It just struck my head, my world turned upside down, and I... You literally open Abbey Road Saturator with nothing on it. Like, you don't move anything. The way it actually comes, just by default, helps a vocal so much. 
it adds air it adds body to the vocal and it adds some some like crunchiness to it that it's not annoying it adds a tone to it it adds color which is like what i wanted so i basically did that for it after that i have added a cla to a mono it's a compressor i wanted to control the vocal so it wasn't like jumping so much after that i've added a pro mb to basically ds the song because all the s's weren't annoying but i wanted to control them even further after that i've added a gulfos which is actually getting rid of all of these annoying frequencies um and then i've got span to check how the vocal was looking <laughs> and i've also added a fab filter pro ds to again get rid of the highs because highs are annoying if you don't control them so without any effects sounds like this it just struck my head my world turned upside pretty good but with effects it just struck my head my world turned upside down very clear very good sounding after that i actually sent all these vocals to a to a pre-master which has cla stereo you don't really have to do anything you can just choose a type of sounding um preset and it just adds up to it it's super subtle but it's it's noticeable at least to me um they sent me a lead delay and a lead reverb separately so i separated them i sent them to her own channel you can see them here this is the this is the delay and this is the reverb all i did to this all i did to this was add a parametric eq and it sounds like this it just struck my head my world turned upside down and i feel lost inside wish that i could pretty basic um after this we go into the chorus where we have some dubs this is one of them tell me am my dream never felt this feeling um i did a pre pre master for this as well all i did was add a compressor to control it and then a deesser to remove all of that all of that tss, you know which is very very annoying actually um uh, she also sent me two falsettos one of them sounds like this tell me am i dreaming never felt this another falsetto tell me am i dreaming a little bit wider and then she has a she sent me a background reverb sound it sounds like this really really adds up when you play this together it sounds like this tell me am i dreaming never felt this feeling then you play the reverb tell me am I then you play the delay and then you play the main lead and it sounds best thing ever listen to this tell me am i dreaming never felt this feeling don't know what i'm searching for so if you listen to this together it sounds like this my computer might might lag a little bit because i'm recording and i'm trying to record in high quality so and it's honestly like so good you know um for the second part of the song i mean for the job actually she sent me a a part where she just sings the thing and it sounds like this Dum, dum, da, deja. It's it's the most catchiest thing ever. So I had to add it to the job. And it sounds like this. <laughs> On the second part of the dum 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 deja vu, I've added a background reverb that sounds like this. And it just sounds like a har harmony. Dum, dum, da, deja vu. And it just sounds so good. Like I, this is the catchiest thing I've ever made, and it's just like it blows my mind every time I listen to it. Uh, so yeah, the second part of the song basically has again lead, reverb, um, some harmonies, and for the second, actually for the second build up, there's a harmony that I really, really love that sounds like this. <laughs> This is how it sounds by itself. They say it's deja vu when I dream things that come true recall in my past life. Really, really good. I love the way she pronounced the words. Um, she actually did, which is very important. Uh, whenever you're working with a vocalist and they send you a vocal that sounds like mumble rap, 
it's not as usable and it's obviously not as easy to promote. But when every single word is easy to understand, you know it's a good singer. Uh, this person was really good to write the vocals, to pronounce the vocals, to perform the vocals, to everything. Um, honestly, a great experience. Obviously, I paid a lot of money. You know, it was a huge investment. I haven't even recouped that from the song, but I think it's worth it, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what you guys think of paying artists. I mean, paying vocalists uh, to collaborate with you on a song. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave this to you guys so you guys can actually criticize and, and tell me. Tell me what you guys think. Do you guys think it's fair for us to pay vocalists to work with us? Should it be the other way around? If you think we should pay them, how much should we pay them? How do you how do you calculate that? Um, also, if you pay someone, do you think you should then pay them royalties? Do you prefer to just pay them royalties? You know, there's so many questions that come from this. Some producers hate paying for this, but in this case, I really, really wanted to invest into this. You know, I wanted to invest into my child, as I've said before. So this child could grow and be successful in the future. Um, so that's pretty much it for this song. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys learned something. I know I didn't go that deep into the mastering, etc. Let me actually show you real quick. For the mastering, I have an EQ. I have an imager. Basically just making the lows mono and the highs a little bit wider. Um, I actually made the low mids uh, wider which is pretty interesting. You can actually see it. You can actually hear it. Then I have a Goofos to get rid of all the unwanted resonances. Then I have a Sausage Fattener at 1%. Yes, sir. And then I have an Invisible Limiter. And that's pretty much it for the Master. You know? Pretty basic thing. What I mostly focus on was, again, on composing, you know, making a song that sounds good. By itself, without any sounds, without any pre without any plugins, I mean. And then, when you add those plugins, you make that song from sound to great. And then you master that, and it sounds excellent instead of great. So, that's what this song is. I've been thinking about making a remix competition for this song, but it would obviously take me, like, one month of making it. And then, like, obviously, I have to give you time for you guys to make it. I don't know. Let me know if you guys want me to create a remix competition for this. If you guys have any ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Like, don't be scared of writing like, you know, Jay, I'm struggling with doing this. So you should do this and teach me because I'm down. All right. I'm back at YouTube. Hopefully you guys are excited. I'm also excited. If you want to connect with me, all my socials are JSCar, TikTok JSCar, Instagram JSCar, everywhere. I really hope you guys have an amazing day. I'm having a blast being here, making TikTok content, making music. So hopefully you guys are also having a blast, you know. I'll see you guys later on another video. Bye-bye.